Hi there, everybody. Today we're going to be talking about the Pythagorean theorem. Okay. Pythagorean theorem. Okay. And uh, you've probably seen this before. Um, the Pythagorean theorem is about triangles, but not just any triangles, it's about right triangles, triangles with a right angle in them. Okay, so here's a right triangle, okay, and it's got sides A, B, and C. And now why have I done C in a different color from A and B? Well, C is a fundamentally different type of side than A and B. Okay. Um, pause for a moment here and think about um, what is C called? What's the vocabulary word for it? All right, if you haven't thought of it yet, it's hypotenuse. Okay. C is called hypotenuse. And A and B have kind of a shorter name. Uh, you actually have two of these. Okay, so pause for a moment to think about what the word might be. All right, it's legs. So A and B are called the legs of the right triangle. Okay, so what is the hypotenuse? Um, the hypotenuse. is the longest side of the right triangle. Okay. And one thing that has to be true is that the hypotenuse always has to sit opposite the right angle, the 90 degree angle. Now why is that the case? Well, if you think about these two angles, okay, um, these two have to be less than 90 degrees. Why is that? Well, remember we did our 180 project and we saw all the angles of the triangle have to add up to 180. So if this guy is already 90 degrees, then these two, well, they both got to be bigger than zero because otherwise you don't have a triangle. So um, each of these has to be less than 90 degrees. Um, and so because the hypotenuse is opposite the largest angle, well, it's got to be the largest side, the longest side. Okay. That's a bit of extra information, though. Important thing for you to remember, hypotenuse, longest side of the triangle. And it always sits opposite the 90 degree angle. The legs are the other two sides of the triangle. Of the right triangle. And uh, as we said before, they're A and B. All right, so now that we've got all the terms lined up, what does the Pythagorean theorem actually say? Okay, well, the Pythagorean theorem says that in a right triangle, let me write that a little more clearly, in a right triangle, Now pause for a moment and see if you can remember the equation. Okay. The equation is a squared, okay, so the square of this leg plus b squared equals a 
c squared. Okay. Where a and b are the lengths of the legs and C is the length of the hypotenuse. C is the length of the hypotenuse. Okay, so let's just take a step back and try to understand what we've just figured out. So we take the length of A, square it, add it to the length of B, square it. That has to be equal to what happens if we take the length of C and square it. Okay. One other way you can think about this. Okay. Let's take a right triangle like this guy and let's find the two legs. Okay, so we've got A over here and B over here. Those are the two legs. And now what we're going to do, we're just going to draw a square on side A. Okay, so this is a square. Okay, it's got all right angles. Now, what's the area of the square? Well, it's a times a, so it's got to be just a squared, right? a times a. Okay. Similarly, we're going to draw a square on the b side, the b leg. Okay. Now what's the area of that going to be? Well, it's a square, so both the length and the width are b. So the area has to be b squared. Okay. And now finally, we have the hypotenuse c. We're going to draw a square on that. That's a pretty, uh, I, I, I didn't exactly do the best job of lining up the sides, right? But just pretend that's like a square. Okay, so, um, and just like before, the area of this rectangle is going to be the side length. The area of this square, I should say, is going to be the side length squared, so C squared. And what does the Pythagorean theorem say? Well, it says that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. But what does that mean? Okay, what does a squared represent in this diagram? That's right, kids. I feel kind of like Dora here. Um, but that's right. So um, a squared is the area of this rectangle, right? So the number of square units that it takes to fill up this green rectangle, okay, plus the number of square units that it takes to fill up this rectangle, the b squared rectangle, okay, equals the amount of square units it takes to fill up this turquoise rectangle. So um, if I were to drain all the paint out of this square and all the paint out of this square, then I would get enough to fill up this square, no more, no less.